What's up guys, Alvaro here and welcome to the Bilingual Stock Market channel again. You guys must be wondering like, hey, where, where is Alvaro at? I am on top. This is my very good friend Mario, one of the best traders I have ever known. And this is going to be a very special video for me because we are going to be talking about the markets. We're going to be breaking down stocks, talking about a possible recession in the US. And I wanted to film this video because many of you guys have reached out to me um, trying to sign up for my patron. Unfortunately, my patron is written and, you know, is, uh, let's say, is spoken in Spanish. And many of you guys don't speak Spanish. So it turns out to be that Mario recently started his own patron. I signed up like two or three weeks ago. And the content is extremely, but I mean extremely valuable. So I told Mario, like, hey, man, let's, you know, let's chit chat. Let's talk about the markets. Let's break down some stocks. And I would like every single one of you guys to take a look at his patron because he's posting very important content, very valuable content. He can uh, support you guys throughout the trading sessions. Very nice guy, very talented guy. So with that further ado, so go ahead, Mario, introduce yourself. Tell us, tell us a hey. bit more about you before we start, start out the, the technical analysis. Yeah. Hey, Alva. Thanks for doing this, man, first and foremost. <laughs> and uh, my name is Mario, and I've been trading for like two and a half to three years right now. And uh, let me give you some perspective on where I started out. So when I started trading, uh, I was in one of the biggest bull markets in the history so i had like everywhere like if i close my money and put the money on the stock it was gonna go up it's a win yeah it's yeah. gonna go up <laughs> <laughs> and then like um i came across alva uh through discord and then like once the market started doing its ups and downs in 2020 uh, and the end of 2020 uh that's when like i i wanted to learn more about it i got more passionate about it i wanted to learn more about it I think Alva is the first person who I asked for uh, basic introductions on what is S&P 500, what is NASDAQ. So I had no clue. So, but after Alva telling me what is what and everything, things started to like, you know, I started working on markets. I started working hard on it every single day. And I used to sit in front of the computers from nine to five, like nine to four, like on, when the market opened to market closed. And after the market closed, I used to spend like six to seven hours every single day in order to get better. So right now, it took a while for me to get consistent with the markets. And right now I'm consistent. So I just want to help yeah, out. You are a profitable yeah. trader. You know, I yeah, know that. So, mm -hmm. Which is a so, very, very difficult task nowadays. We, we, yes, are, yep. we are dealing with, you know, with a very tough market. And you are a, you are a profitable trader on a constant mm -hmm. basis. That's, that's really admirable. Absolutely, yep. man. Mm -hmm. Thank you, man. Uh, so, um, Trading in this type of market, especially if you joined in 2020, and I understand most of the people have nine to five jobs, so they can't f put more time and more kind of like what to say, more time into the market, studying technical analysis and all those stuffs in detail. And especially in this market environment, it's very difficult if you don't know what you're doing, it's very difficult to make money with short term options. So what I did right now, it's like, I want to venture into some business type of thing. So I already been staying in several Discord servers, helping out people, like whoever asked me questions, like whatever I learned, I just help out people, right? So with me starting out this Patreon, what you will get is daily market updates before open, for example, where the, I think the SPY is going, where I think QQQ is going, like S&P 500 and NASDAQ. And Apart from that, like every single morning, you'll be getting a watch list on the stocks which I'm watching and which you perhaps you should be watching too if you're planning on day trading or swing trading or like whatever type of trades you do. And I most of my trades is based on futures. Uh, I trade futures a lot, yeah. and I also do spreads a lot. That like in this type of markets, I mainly focus on futures trading, and I wanted to like give you guys the levels on futures whatever i'm watching so especially if you're trading spy or qqq mm -hmm. it'll be really helpful so currently i have like three tires in my patrons uh, first tire mainly focus on spy alone 
and you'll get the numbers on SPY and you'll get the watch list on which the is extremely which helpful watching. to take trades with either exactly the, S the mm -hmm. S&P 500 or the, or the SPY or you can use the intraday direction of the markets okay exactly um, based on the SPY in order to determine your you know your uh, you know the the, the entries for your trades e exactly. either longs or shorts obviously mm -hmm. both of them that's very very exactly. helpful information yeah mm -hmm. Yep. So uh, this is like a first tier patron. So uh, if you want to just uh, join and just see, get a taste of how it is. So you'll be getting uh, important updates to before market open and after market close on my views on how the market is going to be for the next day as well. So that and then you'll also get a watch list on the stocks which I'm watching for the particular day. And then if you subscribe for Tire 2, I'll, I'm offering not only SPY, you'll get all the um, benefits of Tire 1 plus you'll be getting ES and NQ, SPY, I mean QQQ, and then including the watch list as well. And if you're subscribing for Tire 3, you get access to the live chat access, and you can see the details in my Patreon on the timings of the live chat every single day during market session as well. So I started this mainly because once I started getting profitable, I realized that like, you know, if I wanna help people out, if, like, if I'm doing something to help people out, I want to make sure that, you know, I'm doing it in a business way so I can learn more about from the business point of view. Mm -hmm. And I can also like, you know, venture it as a new project so I can learn the advertising side of the business. I can learn the intricates of how everything works from a business side and not only from the trading side as well. So that's one of the major reasons why I started this Patreon. So you guys can check it out. Uh, yeah, and I, I, will drop the I, I, the I sign up for the tier three and I mean, the channels are, are great, bro. Market updates, trade ideas. We also have stocks and options. We have NASDAQ futures. We have order flow. We have, crypt, we have a crypto chat. We have a, a stock tweets, earnings calendar. You know, I mean, it, it's been extremely helpful for me, you know, that I am running my own Patreon. I need to provide, uh, you know, constant information to, you know, to the members of my Patreon and your patron has, has turned out to be extremely, but I mean extremely helpful. So uh, for, for all of you guys that haven't been able to sign up for my patron because you don't speak Spanish, that's fine. You have, a, you have an excellent option with the, with the patron of my good friend Mario, which is an excellent trader. I am going to drop, uh, I, am to, I am going to drop the link uh, in the description box of this video. So go ahead and check it out. And by the way, I am also uh, participating in your live chat, man. So if you if you guys want okay. to, uh, you know, have information about the markets throughout the trading session um, from me and from Mario, go ahead and take a look at Mario's uh, patron. As I just told you, the link is going to be in the description box of this video. Okay, Mario. Now let's yeah. go ahead and talk about the markets. This, this has been it. a tough one, man. <laughs> On Thursday, last th Thursday, no, last Wednesday, because today, today is Friday. So last Wednesday, the only thing that we had to do was buying call options right at the opening yep. mm -hmm. and hold them until the closing bell. And on yep. Thursday, it was the opposite. You, the only thing that you need to do was getting puts <laughs> right at the opening and hold them until the closing bell. So very, very tough oh, market to trade as of now. So what are your thoughts about the upcoming week? Ah, for the upcoming and week. And cheers, bro. I, ha I am having a wine over here. It is 7.23 <laughs> in the East Coast. I'm having a coffee. Cheers. That, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> okay. What are your thoughts about next week? So, uh, all right, man. So I'm uh, I'm kind of neutral for next week, to be honest with you. Uh, uh, do you remember? I don't I don't remember. if I don't think if you remember or not. Like when we have that massive green day on Thursday, I was telling you this PPI is going to come remember. back. It was, it was on Wednesday. Yeah. Oh, Wednesday, yeah. There you go. I, I remember telling you, like, uh, I'm pretty sure this PPI data is going to come back and bite in our ass pretty time too. Yeah. And I told you that. <laughs> so the problem right now is the selling is happening in a low volume. Correct. Buying is happening in a low volume. Mm -hmm. So everything is happening in a low volume. So if you go short, when the selling is happening, there is always a chance that they're going to rip your face up with the rallies in the intraday. Yeah. And it's difficult to go short. And Correct. if you go long, Mm -hmm. The next day, you know that what's going to happen, they're just going to rip it higher up in the open and then dump it until the entire entire trading day. You saw what happened on Thursday's session. Like on the first five minute candle, we had a massive $2 move in SPY. We went up, we went up. 
And yep. we fell we fell at 40 or 44 seven yep. I think, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And that ballpark 44 well, Let me pull it up failed. here quickly. So we fell at 4460. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. So let me bring you, you, let me bring you back here. Yep. Yeah. And take a look. I mean, I am taking a look at the S&P 500 here. So we fell mm -hmm. at 4460. And after mm -hmm. that, man, the only thing that the S&P did throughout the trading session was, you know, pulling back. I mean, we yep. found some sort of support at 4408, 4,408 mm -hmm. points. We mm -hmm. saw some sort of, you know, of push to the upside. Mm -hmm. We failed at 4430, and yep. then the, the only thing that the S&P did was, I was thinking to myself this morning, and I was reflecting about this with one of the, with some members of my Patreon, that you know that the deadline in order to pay taxes here in the US is on Monday. So mm -hmm. maybe who knows if a lot of people were selling out of stocks in order to get some cash to pay to pay for taxes because the deadline is on Monday. So I mean I don't know that's some sort of that's, so, that's one theory. conspiracy that's one theory. theory you know yeah. like, who knows <laughs> who knows. That. <laughs> okay, pull up. Uh, what where are you thinking about the S and P or the or the SPY right, next week, please? So let me pull up the charts for you guys. Pay close attention here, guys. This is a, this is a very very good trader, and he's gonna share with us. There you go. So the screen all is right. all yours, bro. Come on. Mm -hmm. All right, man. So during on Thursday session, all I had in mind on Wednesday's close, especially we had a very strong close on Wednesday. This is a 15 minute chart, right? Yeah, this is a 15 minute chart on okay. SPY. So okay. we had a very strong close on Wednesday. So I was uh, I was telling my members of the Discord that we had a very strong close. So tomorrow morning, the high probable scenario is us testing 444.89 or 445.87. Okay. If that happens, we're gonna go up and fill the gap over here exactly at around 446.70 or going all the way up to test 447.95 so that was my game plan coming at the close of wednesday okay and then we had the ppi data which okay. is on wednesday market shrugged it off and i was always skeptical about the rally which we had on wednesday. it was nasty was like, man the ppi yep. was nasty absolutely very nasty very worst bad. reading ever i mean yep. ever for exactly. the for the producer price index nasty mm -hmm. absolutely nasty and the markets so, went up i mean, I mean whatever you know it's exactly like, right i know like i was kind of surprised so i entered the venice trading session with a very very bearish view and i entered the venice session after this after seeing the ppi data i was like nah this is not <laughs> happening at all and then i noticed the price action for the first five minutes when it came back over here touched the 4 38 33 mm -hmm. I, and then bounced i was like I got to keep my bias aside. Okay. Though we had a nasty, nasty day. This might be a trend day. We have a, we might have a trend day ahead of us. Correct. So, I was like, all right. I went long exactly over here, four forty eight thirty three. I was like, all right. The support is holding. I can go long here. If that breaks, I can always exit with a small loss in my longs. If it didn't break, I can have a huge upside in my hand. So, if you keep out the bias on that day and then went long. You, you would have a lot of money. Real good. Yeah, yeah, you would have paid real yeah. good that day. Yeah. And also one more trick, one more stuff which actually kind of like tricked us on Thursday morning. Something to something important to note about is on Wednesday's close, I pushed out a notification saying that, all right, but the, this close is really strong. Higher probability is upside for tomorrow. On low and volume, because on we, low we went volume. up on low yep. volume, mm -hmm. correct. Mm -hmm. Exactly. If we check the volume over here, right? So you can see it clearly. If we check out the volume yesterday. The candle is bullish. You can see this. This is a bullish engulfing candle. It engulfed the entire red day we had the day before. And this was a strong candle that came out in a terrible volume. This was actually, uh, I think yesterday, I mean, day before yesterday was the lowest volume we had on the entire week. Okay. Less participation. And then I was like, all right, fine. We went up. The probability right now, price action wise, is testing the higher numbers. So next day, the market opened you can exactly see what happened on the first five minutes. Over here, you can see the first candle. They ripped higher above the, this 443.94 levels. This is a five minute chart, right? Yeah, this is a five minute chart okay. on SPY. Like okay. this is the first candle. Like when this candle SPY opened, an open print on SPY as you can see 443.55. When this happened, a lot of bulls got trapped. A lot of them. If like it broke through the resistance level, and it ripped higher and it went all the way to like 444.71. Yeah, the, the reaction and, was brutal. Mm -hmm. Yep. Brutal. And then like 
a lot of people went bullish like even even it tricked me for a while like uh, if this continued for like five more minutes and then we had a candle close for the next candle of the five more minutes i would have went bullish because this was candle set to trap the bulls at the open if you ask yeah. me <laughs> you sent me a message you sent me a message yeah. uh, at around mm -hmm. 9:45, and you told me bro brutal reaction here watch out Yep. And yeah, and take a look at what, at what happened after that. You know, we saw a, a massive, terrible rejection. Yeah, and terrible rejection. To be honest, like I was expecting, I had like two levels in mind. If we get rejected at 444.89, the next level I was having in mind was 442.53 and 441.51. Because as you can see, that was the range which I've been having for the past few days. And over here, 441.52 held as a support. And you can see the range over here. So these two are the range which I was watching. I was watching for S&P 500 to touch 442.50 and then bounce from there. If that happens, it was good for bulls. Yeah. If, and it was a previous, a previous resistance, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep, unfortunately it didn't happen at all. They flushed it through 442.53. And then like I also sent out a note that NASDAQ was acting kind of suspicious that day. <laughs> NASDAQ was the weakest one of all. Like when S&P 500 went all the way to positive like 0.40%, uh, NASDAQ yeah. was still negative. Yep. And, and let, let, let me check those la those last two candles of Friday because the volume was was greater than the other candles, right? If you can scroll uh, to your right, the last right. two candles, take a look yep. at the volume. Mm -hmm. It exactly. went up a lot, man. That was mm -hmm. massive exactly. selling pressure over there, yep. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the, you massive know, selling pressure. Yesterday's close closed. was nasty, man. Nasty. Yep. Absolutely terrible nasty. Close. Yeah, terrible. If you notice something, like a lot of volume, it, it, it happens like almost every single day, if you notice, right? Uh, the volume, most of the volume comes in the close. Yeah. They dumped it exactly at the close, and you can see over here, and it was like so And on top less. of that, on Thursday, we had expirations, options expiration, Options right? expiration, yeah. So mm -hmm. yeah, that, that, that put more pressure to the downside. Yeah, I got, I yep. got that. So, so you, you were going to show me some stuff about the, the yield curve. You have the spread yep. mm -hmm. of the two year relative to the 10 year, because there this is important, go. right? And uh, bearing. Yeah, like bearing. very important. So, <laughs> what are your thoughts on recession, Alba? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I don't know what to say, man. Uh, Goldman's, uh, you know, guidance and JP Morgan's guidance was like, we are not really sure about a recession. So mm -hmm. like, like we have a lot of concerns on the table, but we are not 100% sure that we are going to have a, rece a recession. Mm -hmm. So I don't know, man. This is a tricky one for real. I don't, I don't know, I don't know what to think about. I mean, and at the end of the day, everything is going to depend on inflation. If the Fed can, you know, bring inflation down without forcing a recession, then we are not going to have a recession. But if inflation uh, keeps on going up, then maybe, <laughs> you know, a soft landing won't be possible, and we are going to go into a recession. I mean, that's the. I am going to be. Let's just put it this way, bro. I am going to be keeping a close watch on inflation. Mm -hmm. And core CPI came out a bit better than expected, so that's hopeful, we could say. But at the end, it also depends on whatever is going to happen in Ukraine, because if the war in Ukraine happens to, you know, to uh, to uh, go like uh, way longer, then that is that is going to put a lot of pressure to the upside when it comes to commodities and, yep. and mm -hmm. stuff. So, yeah, I, I think that Russia and Ukraine are critical uh, at yep. this moment, right? For now, yeah, but we did have the inflation before Russia and Ukraine too, if you think about it, right? Because uh, I yeah. remember watching the CPI print somewhere around 3%, like on last 2021 May or something. Yeah. You can see the massive increase. Russia, Russia Ukraine happened like well, after 2022. Yeah, that was in it, February, right? I think, right? Yeah, yeah something when on February 2022. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. But yeah. we have already way past the Fed, uh, Fed's price target, like, three months before that, if you think about it, right? Like yeah. on 2021, we were way past it. But the only problem which we had before was the bond markets were not reacting this way, which they should be reacting to the CPI print, whatever we got. I think uh, I remember uh, complaining about that to you as well. Like uh, I was telling you, like, we have a CPI print of this much. Like why why the hell the 10-year yield is not reacting the reacting way which it should it, be? Right? Yeah. yeah. It and looks it then, looks like it's gonna it is it, I mean I, I see the I see TNX. I mean when I see when I say TNX, I'm talking about the ten year treasury yield. I see it bursting above three percent anytime soon, man. Yep. Absolutely. I agree with right? you on that. We like, agree with you on that. Yeah, so bonds are gonna are gonna I mean longer term bonds are gonna remain under pressure, probably, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, exactly. I, I see it bursting above. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, can you please explain to us uh, what is this? 
Yeah, so you can see here, this is a two year and a 10 year spread, yield curve spread, right? Mm -hmm. So, and if we speak about economics perspective, like uh, I don't wanna get too technical, so I'm just gonna put it in a simple way. So when you are buying something, buying a bond for longer term, you, uh, you're you taking on more risks you, because there is no way of knowing what's gonna happen in the 10 year time. 10 frame. years, 20 years yeah. out. Mm -hmm. Correct. So, uh, technically speaking, you will be you, you're taking more risk by buying a longer term bonds. So you will be you should be paid more for taking that risk. Right. So if you're taking a shorter term bonds, you it's comparatively easier to predict what will happen in the next two years than predicting what will happen in the next ten years. So you buying the two year bond should actually give you less returns compared to that of the you buying the ten year bonds, which might offer you more returns. Correct. But right now, what's happening is people are flocking into the shorter term bonds and the shorter term yields are actually paying more than that of the longer term yields at least until april 1st that's what's going on so the two-year yield was actually if you're buying two-year bonds that was actually giving you more returns when compared to that of the you buying that of the 10-year or 20-year mm -hmm. treasuries that's why the yield inverts so, obviously mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. so when that happens uh when the two-year treasuries yield more when compared to that of the 10 year treasuries, what we get is something called as yield curve inversion. So the one fun fact about this is every time the yield curve inverted, it always predicted a recession in another 16 to 18 months average. In another 16 to 18 month average, every time the yield curve inverted, we always had a recession followed by it. So right now on april 1st i don't know if it's a sick joke <laughs> so exactly on april 1st we inverted and then like we reversed back the inversion and then pushed higher and higher and higher because the 10 yeah, years just I, went I, on I, a I rampage i want to clarify something here that you said so um the the yield curve inversion occurs when there is mm -hmm. uh, an ounce of an outstanding demand for longer term bonds and yep. that's what mm -hmm. that's what brings the you know the yields of yields the down. Yep. of the mm -hmm. lumber okay of, of longer term bonds down correct yep. mm -hmm. so yep. we have so a lot of people concerned the, about the future and that's why they I they know. buy yep. 10 mm -hmm. 20 or whatever mm -hmm. uh, okay the treasury bonds okay perfect yeah yep. i just wanted to clu so, clarify that so yeah exactly that is right like because uh right now people have people are betting on a recession to come people were betting at least like right now the probability of recession went a bit lower but that doesn't take us out of the woods at all yeah. so right now it's a bit lower because the yield curve is not inverted anymore it's like back to normal there was but an april that what what the uh, what april day first was, april first april first was the inversion happened and then like it just reversed back right away but Correct. if you think about it do you think fed can do a soft landing here because i think they are i think they're way 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 late on doing the soft they are, landing they are like extremely behind the curve right Yep. Mm -hmm. exactly. Yeah, because I mean the reference for the for the uh, for the Federal Reserve is the two, is the two year is the two years yeah. treasury yield, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Also, so one at, at some point, at some point, mm -hmm. the, you know, the the interest rates of the Fed should match the 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 two year treasury yield, right? Yeah. So that's so, and, 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 and I mean, if from that perspective, the the Fed is way behind the curve, right? Like way, way behind. behind the curve. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I give you that. They should have raised the interest rates a while back, man. Like they yeah. didn't do it. They didn't do it when they had the chance. They waited. They waited. Now, they waited too much. Yeah, no doubt yep. about it. And now so, they're still behind the curve right now. But in your opinion, are we heading into a recession or not? What do you believe? I personally don't want a recession because um, uh, most people will you suffer, must have yeah. seen. Yeah, you yeah. must have seen how a recession actually makes uh, um, impact the livelihood of the lower middle class and the middle mm -hmm. class people. So I personally, I, I'm, not, I'm not asking, I'm not asking about, uh, I'm not asking about though? what you want. I, I am asking about, I am asking yes. about what you think. Yep. It is possible. Okay. I don't want it just because I don't want it. Doesn't mean <laughs> we get what we want, but yeah, I personally awesome. believe we do have a recession in, in hands if federal reserve can't bring the inflation down. Correct. I let's agree, let's we'll assume that, that. Mm -hmm. let's, uh, I, I read somewhere like, uh, this is an uh, interesting thing to know. Germany, the Europe, right? The Europe side. If if the Russia Ukraine situation escalates, and if Putin puts an embargo on oil supply, Germany will slip into recession in a week. Yeah, I know. From that. there, mm -hmm. it will be a domino effect. Absolutely. If one of the biggest economy in Europe slips to recession. 
It's, it's the largest Every economy single. in Europe, actually. Yeah. Yep. It's the largest mm -hmm. economy in Europe. Yep, exactly. Yeah, for sure. So mm -hmm. if that slips into a recession, that will just form a domino effect and US will be affected too. So your so, your 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 perspective when it comes to the markets, when, I mean, when I say short term, I am talking about six months out, one year out, mm -hmm. is bearish, right? Do you, do, I do was you see, bearish. Do you see more, down, more downside? Do you I see a retest head, yeah. of the lows mm -hmm. of of February? Yeah. Uh, I do believe that's possible. Okay. Uh, I do believe that it's very much in cards, but uh, right now, if I talk about price. For me, like if we test the lows of if we if we break the lows of like 428 inspire, it's over for me. I was like, nah, it's like we try to rally up, we formed a lower high, and then we broke below it. That's all it looks like. If we break 428, 72 inspire. Yeah, we're looking at it's yeah, we're looking at the retest of 380, like something like that, maybe. Yeah, I mean, 38 would be terrible. Yeah, most likely, because it's it's kind of tough, man, because a lot of people want to go long in this market. And heading into 2022, we saw the how bonds completely flipped compared to that of the yields. People mm -hmm. dumped all their bonds and we had the biggest crash in the bond market history mm -hmm. since 2008. So yeah. right now the economy is slowing down. GDP forecast is cut. Like we have earnings season starting next week. Yeah, that is going to be critical. Caps. Netflix is the yep. first big stock mm -hmm. that, that posts earnings next yep. week, I think on Wednesday or Thursday. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that the, in, you know, in the short, in the very short term, everything is going to, is going to depend on the, depend on, the earnings, on, on, the, yeah. on the earnings reports of the, mm -hmm. of the trillion dollar club, right? The Amazons, yep. the, the Apples, the Googles of the worlds and so forth. Speaking about the trillion dollar club, let's go ahead and take <laughs> a look at Tesla. Nvidia, That's, well, I mean, uh, Nvidia doesn't belong to the trillion dollar club yet, but you know, um, close, close enough. <laughs> yeah, it used to be. It's almost it there. It's almost if you there. Remember? Yeah. Do you remember when FB, FB just plummeted? Nvidia took over the market cap of FB for a while. <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, Nvidia is one of the. It's a strong candidate, you know, to become a another member of the trillion dollar club. Yep. Hey, man, can you please minimize your screen quickly? I just want to make sure that yeah, sure. we are recording. You can show it, like without yep. any okay mm -hmm. yeah, let me let me double check over here and yes we are recording okay let's go let's go ahead and talk about some stocks all right okay so what do you think about semiconductors getting SMH, completely bro. it's been a destroyed. strategy i mean let me pull up here quickly on my screen um uh smh we had an ugly close bro on friday Terrible. we held to we held to 38 and maybe I, I don't know if you can pull up smh over there yeah, Maybe we could be seeing over here a double bottom right at 238. Um, mm -hmm. But I'm, I'm afraid that we'll still have more downside if 238 bucks happens to be broken to the downside mm -hmm. because the RSI, the foot hour share of SMH is at 34 points. It is not that low. So we might still have more room to the downside. Okay, now I have your... Can you see the double bottom that I'm telling you? Yeah, around uh, 237, 34, right? There you go. Okay, yep. correct. correct. So this is this is where like uh, I kind of being skeptical about the double bottom being holding. If it holds, that's perfectly great. fine. But the problem right now, which I'm seeing, is if you take a look at QQQ, right? Okay. If you take a look at QQQ, it looks like we are gonna go all the way to like three thirty four. <laughs> so if we had another red day in QQQ and we go all the way to three thirty four, yeah, I think the worst selling will be happening. Will yeah, it's be gonna on be SMH. it's gonna be panic selling most likely. Yep. In most of the big tech stocks, right? The NVIDIAs, the Amazons, the Teslas. But when Google. it comes to NVIDIA, what are you thinking about? I got calls, bro, on Friday. So <laughs> Yeah, it's actually a good risk to reward, though. Like, to be honest, like, uh, right now, I, I won't be too bearish on NVIDIA. These are all the good accumulation zones, if you ask me. Mm -hmm. Even though the charts are looking terrible right now. Uh, the accumulation zones, for me, personally, will be like 209 or 3. 206 and then all the way down to like 202 what what and, what, what would be your entry price if you if you were to go on an nvidia what price were you were looking for all right so i will be having three prices in my head right if, okay. if i'm looking for a long-term swing like around six to seven months out okay so i'll be uh, taking one long position at 209 and i'll be taking another long position at 206 and i'll be taking another long position at 201 20 186 to 198 okay. my stops will be at close below 
197. If we go below 197, that'll be my stop. What criteria? And, what, what, what what criteria do you use in order to determine your stops? Hmm, Say in this let, trade, if you were to to go down on Nvidia here, mm -hmm. do, do you right, use so, do, do you use a percentage or an or, uh, or no, a specific I don't amount use of money? Uh, I don't use percentage. When I'm trading options, uh, I don't use percentage of money which I'm losing in my option contract. Okay. All I care about is the price of the stock. Okay. The price of the stock violates two hundred dollars. The psych big psychological zone for Nvidia. Mm -hmm. If that violates, I'm like, nah, this is a big red flag for me because okay. that for that to happen, I need SMH to violate what two thirty maybe? Yeah, violate two thirty three. If we fill this gap and then like flush down and go all the way to like two two twenty three, it's very much possible if you ask me. If we go so down to fill the scap at that's a previous support from from when two twenty three. Well, we are looking at May, May twenty twenty one. We're looking at May twenty twenty one. Wow! And I can see there is a strong support at two twenty five. But is it possible? Yeah, very much possible if QQQ gives up leading to next week. But I do expect a bounce off from two thirty one levels over here like somewhere around 233.82. I do expect a bounce once we fill that gap and then we push higher. So that's the reason why I might be looking for some longs. And if we take out these levels, I'll be out. If NVIDIA takes out 200, I'll be out. Correct. I'm, if you notice something like I'm going with a six to seven point risk tolerance here, I'm okay if NVIDIA drops like seven points down from where it is right now. Like from it's trading at 209. Yeah, but, but 212. Be, below 200, that would be good night, Irene. I give you that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Okay. So I'm okay until like 201. I'll be adding until 201 to 63 because if you notice something, the risk to reward to the upside is massive. We have two massive gaps to fill somewhere around 217. Yeah, somewhere around 230. We have one gap, like huge gap over here. And then like we have another gap at 257. Okay. So that's a daily two... chart, by the way. Yeah. Yeah, this is a daily chart. Okay. So if you see the gap, let me see. Uh, so we already filled this gap, which we opened over here. Yeah, what what about this chart. resistance over here? That's 230, 228, I think, right? There is uh, a huge yeah, resistance back here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 238, 228 is a big one. Okay. 228 is a big one. You can see over here, which was the highs of September 2021. Correct. 228 was the highs of September 2021. That's a big one to watch, but we, that also increases the probability of filling the gap, getting rejected, and coming all the way back down. Okay, so in summary, your entry prices for NVIDIA, that would be um, two, uh, 208, I mean, sorry, 209, okay. 206, okay. 201. 201, like worst case scenario. Yeah, I, I agree worst with you. Worst case scenario. If worst NVIDIA scenario. breaks 200 bucks to the downside, it's good night, Irene. So mm -hmm. we agree That's on it. that. Done. Yep. Perfect. So this is what I'm watching for, but SMH nearing the support like, I don't understand why semiconductors are getting hit as hard as they are getting hit right now because of the because increase in yeah cost because of price. most because big money you know the big money is thinking that uh, these companies are going to struggle a lot when it comes yep. to you mm -hmm. know to um, raw materials you know yep, to exactly. manufacture chips and stuff so that's mm -hmm. that's the logic behind this yep. sort of of um, of semiconductors it's brutal like for the last two and weeks, it's been brutal it brutal an absolutely an absolute bloodbath man and and very good companies man. Yep. Um, like Actually, AMD and NVIDIA, Qualcomm, Micron, very good companies, cash flow positive, and mm -hmm. they are getting hit hard. But I mean yep. hard. Okay, Terrible, Tesla. Man. Let's talk about Tesla, Tesla my Tesla. Uh, this show me, is show your me zone. what you got. <laughs> this is your zone. You got to tell us. <laughs> yeah. What do you think of Tesla, man? Can what you please, can you please minimize, minimize your, your yep. screen? I, let me pull up here, Tesla, quickly. Let me see. What I do you think about Elon Musk taking over Twitter, man? <laughs> I mean, we, we didn't have any, you know, any concrete news when it comes to that, right? Mm -hmm. And I mean, I, I hope he ends up buying Twitter. I don't know mm -hmm. where he's going to get the money from. I hope he isn't <laughs> going to be selling Tesla stock. So yeah, mm -hmm. hold and uh, Let me show. I am taking a look at Tesla here. Mm -hmm. And I think that we have a very big support at 947 bucks. 947 bucks coincides on the four hour shirt with the 180 SMA. This is mm -hmm. also a previous area of resistance back from early February and late January. And this is also a previous area of support back from early December. I think that at this area, 946 ish, 
this stock is very likely to come across with buyers. We also have the 100 day moving average holding exactly. a support mm -hmm. at 977 yep. bucks. Mm -hmm. So if on Monday we have a positive opening, you know, like uh, NASDAQ 100 opens in the green and stuff, and mm -hmm. if we happen to see Tesla holding 977 bucks, this might be an entry price for Tesla. And 977 bucks also coincide with, with the 100 day a moving average, yeah. yeah, with a previous, yeah, the 100 day moving average also coincides with a previous area of support back from early January and also back from mid November. So, mm -hmm. what do, what are your thoughts about Tesla over here? Pull up All your right. stuff completely, so man. For Tesla, there you go. Let's let see what you got. Let me share. <laughs> maybe, yeah, maybe, maybe maybe we can have an agreement on the 100 day moving average, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. we, we, we are bouncing off from the 100 day MA, 100 SMA for like one, two, three times right yeah. now. Good but, support there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we got rejected at the 20 SMA after bounce from 100 SMA and then like just bouncing. But for now, this is how I feel, right? Uh, it is okay. like consolidating in a bearish, flaggish kind of pattern, <laughs> if you notice. And if you do fall down, you, uh, if you uh, if you take a look at Jan 31st candle on the chart, Jan 31st, we have a massive candle, like a um, green candle yeah. over there, which closed at 937. Big push to the upside over mm -hmm. there, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, for um, from Jan, 30, Jan 31st to all the way to like March 21st, that highs of that breakup candle acted as a resistance. We had an inside day in Tesla, and then like we breached below that candle, rejected at the lows of that candle, and then tried and rejected one more time over there. You can see how many times it got rejected at 937 over here. Try to break above it, rejected close below it. Try to break above it, rejected close below it. And so, by the way, bro, I think that Tesla posts earnings on Wednesday, the 20th. 420. 420, yep. Wow, that's on yep. Wednesday, man. So mm -hmm. what could be happening over there? Who knows, right? You um, should tell me, like, oh, statistically speaking, how many times Tesla went up after earnings? No, nah, they always <laughs> drop. I mean, yep. you know, <laughs> 9 out of 10, the Tesla is very, is very likely to drop after earnings. Mm -hmm. So say Most that we have... scenario? Yeah, Most okay. Most scenario for me is, like, Tesla reporting earnings and then like they are pushing it back to this range over here somewhere around 870 to like 937. but the thing is that i mean tesla always sells off for something like three or four consecutive trading sessions after earnings yeah so you you think that tesla could be visiting eight 870 bucks right very much possible if okay. provided they uh, provided they reported like not so bad earnings if they reported terrible no, no. earnings don't, don't get yeah. me wrong don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. This is gonna post record earnings. I I have no okay. I have no doubt about it. The mm -hmm. thing is that the valuation at these levels is extremely stretched. So for it Tesla is. in order mm -hmm. to you know to please the markets, I mean it is impossible. It is impossible. The P ratio of Tesla. I am pulling pulling it up here. What's the P on Tesla's of now? It, it, uh, this, it must be way above a hundred. So the P of Tesla as of now is let me see. What's the P of, of my Tesla here? Um, it's gotta be insane. So the valuation is, is extremely stretched. I as think of now. this is one of 201, the- 201, bro. P Holy ratio, shit. 201. <laughs> Unbelievable. So Tesla Tesla cannot please, you know, investors at these levels. I mean, that's the yeah. way it works. So Tesla is very likely to drop after earnings. So you're mm -hmm. seeing 870 bucks as a possible. I can see 870 bucks over here. So yeah, this is a previous area of support back from mm -hmm. mid December. Okay, yep. that that might be. So this would be a, this would be you know the short of a life, bro. Mm -hmm. Buying boots into earnings and having <laughs> Tesla drop down to eight hundred seventy. Yeah, bucks. the problem with that, right? Like um, with the earnings, playing earnings, you gotta do it tactical. Mm -hmm. Like if you just buy puts and then the next day they just like rip it higher, you're already overpaying for the premiums, which is already priced into the earnings. And if it didn't go your way. Next day, all the premiums which was baked into it was getting was getting ripped off from you. So best thing to do is like playing through iron condors, like getting like uh, two or calendar, standard deviation calendar spreads above. maybe. Uh, calendar spreads will also get affected because you need in order to make money from the calendar spreads. Uh, you got to have the implied volatility increasing. Correct. After I mean, earnings, which, which is what usually happens into earnings, but implied volatility yeah, into earnings, up. but after correct. earnings it drops. Yeah, correct. So, but Absolutely. if you're holding, yeah, if you're holding calendar spreads after earnings, 
Yeah, the Doesn't implementability coming down to... is going to hurt your profitability. Yep. Mm-hmm. profitability. Exactly. That's so I, I recommend iron condors. Like if you're going like three weeks or four weeks out, or you can just give yourself some time, like 30 days time, and then if go like two if, standard deviations. Yeah, and iron condors, if we don't happen to have like huge moves to either the upside or the downside, mm-hmm. if yeah. you're expecting the stock to trade sideways after earnings. Yeah, exactly. And that's you're why right. we're going for like 30 days out. So even you're if right. it breaches your higher or lowest, right, you can always roll it over. And right. you can always get out with a smaller loss. We are only in here to capture the IV dump after earnings. Once that happens, out. That's it. We're not holding it beyond that. Awesome. Awesome. So okay. That's one way to play. What do you think about Apple? Let's talk about Apple. Oh, it got killed. It Apple. broke. I don't even need to pull it up, man. It broke the support oh, of 167 wow. bucks. Terrible. terrible. I don't need to pull it up. 167 bucks is a critical spot. It was broken to the downside. Right. So was, let me share my screen. Yeah, yeah absolutely. See. Go ahead. There you go. You can see this, man. This is Take a terrible. look at that candle, man. And that last I candle. I have no mercy on Apple, man. Let me be honest with you. I have no fucking mercy on Apple at all. Because, <laughs> <laughs> because you see this? You see this? Mm-hmm. Over here? Yeah, that brand. To the, I mean, that brand was insane. Yeah, look at this. One, two, three, four, Unbelievable. five, six, Yeah, it went seven, up. It eight, went up for eight. Seven days. For eight days in a row. Days. Unbelievable. Yeah. yeah, unbelievable. This is like insane this mm-hmm. alone accounted for almost 70 percent of the reversal in s&p 500 and nasdaq since this being one of the highest holding in both of them yeah seven percent in the in the s&p and 13 yeah. percent in the ndx exactly when the highest weight stock in the s&p 500 and nasdaq and, uh, sorry this is a daily chart yes. so what, you're, what, daily yeah, chart. what you are showing me was the was the way of apple up to 180 it was what what day was that at what uh, it it went from 150 all the way to like 179. Wow, it almost hit 180 March bucks. 30. Unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah it was almost for near record yeah. highs. Yeah. yeah. Unbelievable. The reason? No one knows. Like, what's yeah, the reason? And like, on, on, no good news. On no yeah. good news at all. Yeah. Exactly. So, and if you were to take a trade on Apple, Oh, what would you be thinking about? Either short or long? Uh, so, all right. So, if give, I'm give me the shorting prices. Apple, okay. if I'm shorting Apple, I would wait for a bounce to like 167.17. I want Apple to do something like this. If I'm shorting Apple, I want this to go all the way over here. Give me a rejection. Short it right over here. And At 167. All the way to okay. 162. Okay. At 167.21 is what I'm watching yeah, on Apple. That's a critical spot. Critical for yeah. Apple. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So okay. if you take a shot over here, you can take a shot over here with the stops all the way at 160. Now close above 170. You basically are, you're risking three points to make a profit on five points or lower. If 162 breaks, you got to be very, very careful when you're longs because you're going all the way down to test 158 or 157. Which is a previous so, support, right? Over there from February. Yep. Mm-hmm. Okay. 157 is a support all the way from like November 2021. And that was the all time highs we're looking at September 21, like in that area, 157.03. Perfect. Okay, so um, technically we are risking like three points to make five points or like even higher, five okay. or like seven points from them. So any reaction at 167 is a short. Perfect. Yeah, for me. I, Depends. I like, mm-hmm. Okay, perfect. Uh, what do you think about Google? I uh, love the stock, man. 2,500. I, 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 I have a price I for you today. I love the stock. 2,500 is a screaming buy, despite oh, the fact that bad. we are in front of a very ugly looking short. But I would, I would oh, say it is that a terrible chart. Like we'll it is a terrible chart. All Absolutely. the moving average, but twenty five, twenty. That's you, you can see over here. Yeah. Bounce, 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 bounce. Twenty five, twenty is critical for Google. They better provide good earnings on April twenty sixth. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm you always bit, know I'm, Google. I gotta, I gotta be honest with you. I am a bit concerned about YouTube because, mm-hmm. yeah, because you know, advertisement. Mm-hmm. Ads have been going down. I am a YouTuber. I am being paid by by YouTube, mm-hmm. and the amount of money and the amount of ads that um, that at least I am getting as a YouTuber um, that that has been going down, man. So, so uh, comparatively speaking, from uh, last quarter to this quarter, you you are saying like there is a there is I, a difference. I think that there is, there is a risk of of Ad Google missing on earnings and mostly oh. when it comes to YouTube mostly when it comes to YouTube ads 
So I'm a bit, I'm a bit concerned about that. We'll see what happens. But this is a big stock. Because if you notice something, right, for the past, like since 2020 to right now, every single time Google reported earnings, it was always a gap up. Gap up, gap up, gap up, gap up. Like every, yeah. they reported monster earnings like every single quarter. Maybe this quarter it's different. We'll see. Because last and, time it was concerning with the ad revenue stuff, but this time you can take a dagger to chin. Let's see. Yeah. And in the last earnings report, uh, they announced the the split, and it, it it didn't matter, bro. So the you know it was sell the rip, and after Good. that, uh, the, here, the stock has that. has fell off a cliff. Yep, you can see like it tested the all time highs, mm -hmm. printed a double top. And Take a look at that rejection, completely man. Beautiful, completely brutal, <laughs> man. It collapsed. Yep, like from what three thousand all the way to like two thousand five hundred. Yeah. Jesus Christ. So if I you mean, were if you if you wanted to buy Google, uh, what price would you be entering at? Right. So this is a pretty good risk to reward if you ask me. You can go long on forty five twenty. Okay. And then you can set a stops right over here. 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, you said, right? That twenty five twenty. Twenty five twenty. And okay. we can set a stops right over here at forty five eighty five. All right. Okay. Any close below forty five eighty five, we're out. So if we do bounce from here, we are looking at, I, I, I am expecting something like this to happen if we do bounce. If Monday session is green, right? Okay. We can do something like this. We can go all the way to 45.84, get rejected over here, come back to run a test to 45.20. 25, hold, you're saying 40, right? What's sorry, 25.20, my bad. Okay. Like if we go to like 25.82, we can mm -hmm. go all the way up to run a test to 25.82. You can take a short position over here, provided we get rejected. At 25.80, right? Yep, 2584 okay. okay. and ride it all the way down to like 2520 because I believe that's the destination for Google for now. That's what we have to keep an eye on. You Depends believe on that's, where it react over here. That's as bad as it gets, mm -hmm. <laughs> at least yep. in the short term. Okay. Or short okay. term at least. Yeah. Anyway, so, so we have we have a short price and we have a long price. That's great. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yep. So at for 2520. So if you want to go long here, you can take a risk by setting a stops for like 2520 to like what? 40 points stop. 2,490, something like that? Yeah. Okay, okay. makes yeah. sense. So it's like a 30 point stops. You're risking 30 points to make like, let's say like 100 points, like uh, 60 to 100 points like over here, because you can see, my bad. <laughs> so you can see over <laughs> here, every time we touched 2520, mm -hmm. we had a massive yeah, rally. Had we had we, we had buyers waiting for Google at that mm -hmm. price, right? At least two hundred point rally. So we so, so we can make the case that we that the, that Google is is very likely to find buyers at around mm -hmm. twenty two thousand five hundred twenty ish. Something yeah, twenty five twenty ish. Something on the ballpark. We can take a risk over there, and if that breaks, please cut the losses at the break below twenty five twenty four eighty or twenty four ninety. Because we are gonna come down all the way to like twenty four thirty eight if we take out yeah, if that we take be, that out. That would be a massive bag, no doubt about it. That yeah, that if especially if you're playing with options, your contracts will be completely wrecked. Killed. Like that's Killed. no yeah. way of recovering over there. Molly whacked. What do you what mm -hmm. do you think about Amazon? <laughs> <laughs> what is that, bro? Amazon. Amazon. Yeah, all let's go ahead and take a look. Like, uh, what do you think about this, man? Like currently, like all these stocks are like. Uh, giving out splits i mean, I mean uh, the, the stock split that was announced by shopify is an i mean it's a, a absolutely absurd uh, so they didn't announce they, they didn't announce a, a split when it was trading at 1800 bucks and you're gonna uh -huh. announce a split now when shopify is trading like 70 percent of the highs so they just want to artificially pump the stock i mean that's 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 crazy in the case of amazon and google i get it and I think, and this is something that that, that both of us have uh, have talked about. I think that the final idea of both Google and Amazon is being included in the Dow Jones. They want they want to be included in the Dow, and and we, you know that the Dow is a is a price weighted index. So with mm -hmm. the current prices of both Google and Amazon, add, yep. they cannot mm -hmm. be added. You know, in the in the Dow Jones, there's there's impossible. There's, yeah, yeah mm -hmm. there's no not a chance for that, right? So that's the ultimate Gotta goal of them. Something. And mm -hmm. let me pull up here quickly. I want to pull up here quickly um, Amazon to take uh, a Let look. me tell you what do you think of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me, let me go ahead and take a look Amazon. at it. And you take a look at Amazon over there. So it is holding 3,000 bucks. Um, and I think that if the 
the NDX and the S&P uh, keep on going lower, yeah, 3,000 is going to be a critical spot, guys. I mean, uh, Mario, if we happen to break 3,000 bucks, I mean, $2,990-ish, we have a huge leg down, bro, down to 2850 uh, you know, $2,820, maybe 2800 even, some like, something like that. So this is going to be critical, bro, because most of the big tech stocks as of now are in very critical spots. I mean, all of them. Um, Apple, Amazon, Google. So let, let's say that Google breaks 2500 bucks to the downside. Let's say, oh, I lost you, Mario, now. There you go, you're back, okay. Can you hear me? So, yeah, yeah, perfect. Yeah. So let's yeah. say that Amazon breaks uh, 3,000 bucks to the downside, Apple mm -hmm. breaks 160 to the downside, Google breaks 2,500. The there you go, that's good night, Irene, <laughs> for the NDX. So what are your thoughts about, about Amazon? About Amazon, let yeah. me share my Pull screen. Pull it up there, good. Yeah. For Amazon, mm -hmm. I will be keeping an eye on this breakup candle over here. Like we had this massive breakup candle high, which is at Feb 24th, okay. which is sitting around highs at 30, 34. Okay. Right? So, I mean, and I'll be having a stop loss. At, as you said, I agree with you. Like 3000 is critical for Amazon. If you break that 3000, we are looking at a test to 2,898 or 2,946. So I don't trade Amazon much often. So I don't have the levels drawn for Amazon. From what I see over here, I can see that 3,027 is a strong support. Mm -hmm. And over here, we have the lows at, oh, shit. We can see. Oh, we are back in the range, man. I, I yeah. remember Amazon didn't do anything. It so. hasn't done anything for two years and yep. a half, bro. Nothing. Yep. It's been trading exactly. within a 500 buck range and that's it. And we breached the range over here for a brief period of time. And then we pushed above it and we're back above the range. And let's see, man, like we got to hold these levels like uh, 2,950. If we break that, we are looking at a retest of like 2,874 or all the way down. That's back to the from lows. November, right? Yeah, yep. November and October here, of last we, year. Mm -hmm. We had this level held like from 2020. We had a strong support at 2,948. And we breached this for one day and then bulls recaptured it. We had the same support at November 2nd, March 2021. That level is yeah. pretty critical. Yeah, let's so, see how it does. So, Instead of 3,000, 2,950 is mm -hmm. more critical. Yeah. We, we can agree on that. Okay. Okay. Perfect. What so, about what about the upside? Say that someone bucked Amazon. Uh, uh, all right. So let's let's yesterday. let's play the devil's advocate here, right? Yeah. Like, let's say like <laughs> we held we held 3,033. Okay. I can see this going all the way back to running the test to the 50 SMA. Okay. Which is sitting at 30,097. Oh, sorry, 3,097. So if we can go all the way to 3,097, get another rejection. 3,100 if, if, yeah, if you 3, want 100. to round it up. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 3,100. So that, that, that would be a short, right? If, it, I mean, if we get rejected, should there, Amazon, gone for. Yeah, should, should Amazon fail at um, yeah, 3,100, that might be a short. Mm -hmm. Yep. Down to 3,000, which is, I mean, 2,950, exactly. which is the lower mm -hmm. support. So we are looking at like, what, $200 drop from there? Like if you get rejected over there, because... 150 oh. buck. Yeah, that would be exactly, a beautiful short, man. Mm -hmm. Short of a year. So, exactly, man. <laughs> 150 bucks. <laughs> Go grab your puts. <laughs> exactly, man. So if you, you can set a stop, if you're shorting at 3,100, right? You can always set your stop somewhere around... 3130 because when you are taking options in the stocks like amazon you got to have a wider risk man mm -hmm. i mean risk appetite because now if you if, if you said if you set a, a tight stop close, you're gonna be stopped out stopped out real quick yep, yeah exactly correct. plus stocks like amazon uh it, it is volatile right so you got to make sure you're keeping the stops at at least like 10 to 20 points above so correct. if you're going uh, short at 3100 and we happen to push to like 3120 or 3130 you can always exit for like 20 30 point loss but if it did go on your go in your way we are looking at like massive 100 to 150 point upside provided nasdaq fails again at 342 or like something like that also awesome. 
Perfect. Sí, man. Like, what, what are your thoughts on AMC Entertainment? <laughs> what are your thoughts on what, 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 yeah, I, I don't know, man. You know, it's like, what do you <laughs> think about the apes? Are, are the are the apes fucked over here? Let me pull up AMC quickly. Let me see. <laughs> yeah, it's been a tough one, right? I have noticed that the implied volatility has been going up recently, which is a good sign for the for the apes. But as of mm -hmm. now, AMC is trading below all the moving averages. It broke the support of $18.50. So I'm thinking that unless the Russell 2000 happens to have a, you know, a great week, mm -hmm. AMC might be heading down to $14.50, man. So this yeah, is a previous possible. this is a previous support back from late February and also mm -hmm. a previous area of support back from early February. So mm -hmm. I do see AMC testing, you know, something in the vicinity, $14.50 or so, and then maybe bouncing back up from there. So what mm -hmm. are your thoughts about this? All right, so 14 bucks on AMC, I agree with you. That, is, that, is, that has been pretty much critical, isn't it? Like yeah, that's a critical we, support, 14 yeah, bucks. Sure. We have tested the 14 bucks at March 18, 2021. You, you already, you already have the line at 14 bucks yep. and 50 mm -hmm. cents. There you exactly. Go. Like we had like May 18th, that was the resistance. And we held that at support like multiple times. Like look at this bounce, 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 mm -hmm. bounce. Let's see if the top of the range 18 is acting as a support. We held, we recaptured 18 to the close of the week. And starting next week, if you do come down, I do agree with you that we, the higher probability is to test $14 in AMC. So and if so we I, break that, yeah, apes are oof. done for. Yeah, so eight, so any failure at 18 bucks is assured, man. Down to yep, $14.50. Exactly. Mm -hmm. If Correct. you open below, if something happened, if we had an overnight session, like overnight midnight thieves, like gap down the market and we open below mm -hmm. the lows at $17.38. It's an immediate shot all the way to like 14 bucks, 14.56 to be honest. Like gotcha. Okay, they and, got to, and, they got to and, do something here. Let's see. <laughs> yeah, may, or or maybe we can make the case. Implied volatility goes up. We have a lot of apes buying calls. 18 uh, bucks. 18 bucks we, is breaking to the downside. Maybe mm -hmm. the, the apes can fill the gap up to 20 dollars and 50 cents, 21 bucks. That's yeah, a 20, previous 50, resistance, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. That's a bullish case. Mm -hmm. But you got to keep an eye over here, though. Like uh, it, while it's still possible, we close the day below the 100s. Sorry, 50 SMA. And we got rejected chart. from okay. the 50 SMA and the 9, 9 EMA too. Okay. And we have a downward sloping 100 SMA and downward sloping 200 SMA on the daily. Yeah, that's putting, if you take a look that's at, putting yeah. downwards pressure. Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. If you take a look at weekly, things look even more uglier because we, we got rejected <laughs> at 100 SMA in the week. Okay. And you can see the 20 SMA in the week pointing to the downside, yeah. giving more downward pressure. We yeah. got rejected. And right now, the most probable scenario is bulls running a test to $14. It's yeah, I, I, rather I, I than do see it happening. Back to 20, 14 bucks, 14 bucks and 50 cents or so. Okay. If, if, they, if they do get 20, I'm closing my eyes and getting my puts getting right puts. over there. <laughs> <laughs> you can see. Okay, you can see over here. Uh, I mean, uh, is this accident If so we see 20 bucks, says, get puts. Yeah. <laughs> As Frost says, is there accidents and coincidences here? Look at this. Like 2050, right? right. Where, where's 2050? Like 20 SMA and weekly coming yep. right at 2050. And that's and a resistance back from August as well, right? I can see it big over Big resistance. Yeah. Jan 2021, big resistance. This is And on August, a weekly basis. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 20 this bucks is, is like extremely chance. critical. Extremely critical. Extremely. Like yes. you can see like like 20 SMA on the daily sitting exactly over there. When the market opens and we go down further, this 100 SMA will go all the way down to 2050. Okay. So gotcha. this the higher probability right now, $14. There you go. Perfect. To perfect. push to 2050, short it is. That's it. This is your beautiful short. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Now, SoFi, yeah. SoFi Technologies. What do you think? Uh, uh, Dude, I want to I mean, you on I'm SoFi, telling you, man. everything, everything, uh, you know, like financial services related, mm -hmm. ugly, man. I mean, I'm talking about SoFi. I'm talking about Affirm. I'm talking about PayPal. I'm talking about Goldman Sachs. The whole thing, man. I mean, I mean, this is terrible. God, absolutely destroyed. Like, I mean, the, the market so is falling knife right now. Yeah, the market seem to be pricing in a, a recession, bro, over here. So in the case of SoFi, I, I don't really have much to say. Dude, the support of $7.81 was broken to the downside. Gone. 
So yep. that's it, man. This is this chart is absolutely broken from a technical standpoint, and I think that yeah, this is an all-time low, bro, for SoFi. But there's nothing so, to see from the technical side, though. If you take a look at it, right? Like no, there's nothing like to a, do over this here. This is with a Sofi. definition for falling knife over yeah, here. Yeah, this is a falling like, knife. There is, there and is mind no you, bro, way, like, uh, mm -hmm. you know, great company, great revenue growth. So there is a very strong story behind it, but this is the mm -hmm. wrong moment. The, this is still being exactly. a higher multiple stock. We are, you know, we have a lot of fears about a possible recession here in the US. So this is the wrong moment for SoFi. But yeah, I mean, see, man. from a technical standpoint, like, you, 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 <laughs> wouldn't, you wouldn't touch it over here, right? Yeah, because it is like uh, untradable. That's the right word because I don't know the levels to the downside. Like even if you use the FIB levels, it'll give you something, mm -hmm. but that's not something to rely on. But what you... you I, I can tell you something like yeah yeah sure sure go ahead let me share pull, pull up the chart yeah. yeah because like uh, as you can see over here right when it opened when it ipo the lows of the ipo was like ten dollars 13 cents yeah I mean, I, that's what i'm telling you bro what we <laughs> saw yesterday was an all-time low yep terrible it was terrible this is a daily chart we are looking at and you can see like wow, held the ten dollars to hell the ten dollars it was a resistance like over here for multiple times at 11 18 and we face support at 11.18 for multiple times unless this happened we made an all-time low at eight dollars 84 cents we reversed back got rejected at this trend line and then went all the way back down broke this wow bro, it was it was rejected right at the trend line that you are that you drew yep. over there right mm -hmm. yep exactly like yeah, great chart penny, man, man. Mm -hmm. to the penny over here if to you see the that. we had a yeah, sum yeah, up yeah. trend over here like everyone was buying it it bro broke the trend line went all the way down again went all the way back up rejected exactly at again, the trend line once again at the, at the trend line yeah you're low like this is a definition of like like it is a good I, mean, I don't know much about the company man like but if you if you see from a technical point right you can see a clear definition of a stock in a perfect downtrend perfect downtrend. Yeah, this is like, a technical downtrend a hundred percent yeah so lower the, lows, lower this is lows, a no touch lows. i mean when it comes to trading this is a no touch if any of you nah. guys like the long-term story of sofa and so forth okay mm -hmm. go ahead you know pick out some stuff maybe sell put options that would be a better strategy relative yep. than you know buying uh you know shares straight up mm -hmm. but this is a horrible horrible and very ugly looking terrible shirt. man yeah. uh, if you want to trade this i personally recommend i mean i i i think you will agree too selling five dollar puts correct Correct. What do you think about that? Mm -hmm. yeah, Selling absolutely. five dollar puts. Yeah, will you be you perceive a premium, good. and if the trade goes against you, you end up you know getting a premium, and you yeah. end up buying shares at a discounted yeah, price relative to the yeah. current price of the stock. Exactly, that makes sense. So, mm -hmm. trading option. I've I've seen a lot of people asking me like, should I buy a call option on SoFi leading to next week? Like I was like, dude, why will you even touch a call option? This is a falling knife. But yeah. you can get lucky. And then you can make money with the dead cat bounce, but the probability of that happening is really less that I wouldn't even consider taking the risk. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, yeah, yeah, sure, sure. So, uh, Palantir, and after uh, Palantir, we're gonna wrap it up. Another exactly. highly demanded stock. <laughs> no Palantir, I, you can Palantir. see this. This is a noob chart I have. Like, I, it's been a long time since I traded Palantir. Okay. You can literally see the, charting skills of mine when I started trading. <laughs> this is a stock <laughs> which I used to like mess around when it was trading at twenty dollars. Okay. Let me just remove these trend lines over here. Uh, ah yeah I can see yeah I can see the trend lines up uh, you know on the top. Yeah. And yeah, these when, things, when Palantir, you know, the good old times. Good old times at yeah, twenty dollars a box. Palantir twenty, 20 five bucks, twenty eight bucks. <laughs> You can see exactly where I was. The like, good old you know days. What? The good old yeah. days of Palantir. Those, da those, <laughs> exactly. those days are gone. You can see exactly where I like where I was like, you know what? I lost interest in Palantir. Exactly where I lost interest over there. Exactly at $23.18. Yeah. Once mm -hmm. it broke that level, I was like, ah, nah, I'm not even going to look at this chart anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but if you, you were, if you, if you were thinking, if someone, you know, on Patreon asked you about taking a, a trade on Palantir, what would you say? I mean, I for, for either the long uh, side of, or, or either the short side. I would say just like... $12.20 $12 seems yeah, to be... I would say wait for it. Wait to see the reaction at twelve twenty. That's all I would say. Instead okay. of taking the trade right now, wait for the reaction at twelve twenty. 
if they get a bounce, I don't see any trades over here, any trades with good risk to rewards to the upside on Palantir at all. Gotcha. Right? Because since it's what, at $12. What, what price did strong, Palantir close the training session at yesterday? $12.42. Uh, it closed the trade at $12.42. Yep. And so, if we go down on Monday to like twelve twenty one, you can take a risk for scalping, like what that twenty cent, thirty cent move to yeah, the upside uh, from twelve. Some 20. sort of bounce over there. Okay. Yeah. If we break that, we are looking at it's a choppy way down all the way to like I can see it retesting eleven eighty seven, or all the way back down to retest the lows at ten dollars forty seven cents. Okay. I think what's the what's the high IPO highs like? We can see the highs of IPO at eleven forty eleven forty one. Okay. You can see some support or some bounce over here if you want to scalp, or else like we're going to 1095 or 1033. So if we break the support of twelve dollars and thirty cents ish, that's a short there. Mm -hmm. Yep, twelve twenty. Twelve twenty. If you break it, you can scalp it to the downside to eleven forty one or okay. eleven eighty seven. Okay. So it's it's a choppy ride, right? Like this is why I don't take trades like this unless I'm scalping or day trading, because for a 20 cent move, I believe like it's not worth it if you're like I scalping mean, you or day trading for the company. You need to put a lot of money on the table, like a lot yep. of money mm -hmm. on the table. 20, 30 contracts to yeah, make correct. like 200 bucks. It's not correct. worth it for me. I would just or, suggest to stay away. Or if we want to see things last a full for the bulls, we can make mm -hmm. the case that if Palantir starts to consolidate slightly above $12 and 20 cents, mm -hmm. then that, that might be a sign that the bulls are gathering momentum to fill the next gap up to what would it be like? Um, 14 bucks maybe yeah 14, we are having 50. a gap at 1378 1378 there you, there you, you can also see this right like uh you can't make this up they are like flag like flagging in a very yeah, that's a, that, kind that's of a bear flag over there right yeah yep mm -hmm. and Clear. they also close the day below all the moving averages again mm -hmm. and the weekly if you take a look at it you can see a clear rejection of like you can see it man like i can't i can't see a it's a terrible looking chart downward sloping 20 sma yes yeah, downward sloping chart. 50 sma we got rejected at the weekly 20 sma and now we're going all the way back down i wouldn't be surprised if palantir made new lows in coming days though yeah depending you know, on what lows. happens with you know with Q, 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 risk yeah. on, risk on mode stocks let's just put it away right yeah the okay. problem with shorting these types of stocks is like retail heavy yeah. Like, you know, you oh, can't yeah. go so bearish on these stocks, even though the fund, you saw what happened with BBIG that day. Yeah. Even though after the bad report, these stocks are having good sentiments with the retail, shorting good sent retail. I mean, shorting yeah, don't stocks. Don't tell with, me that I bought, I, I got puts of Bed Bath & Beyond on Wednesday. I, yeah, I, that's I, all I, I was saying. I lost like 10 pounds. <laughs> Lucky enough, it fell off yep. a cliff on Thursday. Mm -hmm. But yep. it was like, motherfucker retailers, <laughs> this company. It always hurts, man. This company <laughs> posted horrible earnings, yep. you motherfuckers. What, why are you buying Bed Bath and Beyond? Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, like, Dude, it was tough. It was man. tough on, just, on Wednesday. I mean, it was, I was down for 250 bucks, no problem, in a matter of minutes. Lucky enough, you know, Bed Bath and Beyond ended up falling off a cliff on Thursday. And I made yeah. I made good money out of it, but uh, it was a tough. It one always on comes to senses. It always comes to senses, man. After a yeah. while, like at the you end. can see FOMO kick yeah. in and after it drops like 20, 30 percent. Yeah, goes back higher. It always comes back to reality in a while. Yeah. People always realize that stocks always drop. So there this is what go. I'm saying, man. Palantir is a short. Like I won't be surprised if all of these stocks makes a new low in upcoming futures. So I just say like be careful with options. Trade it, uh, know your risk management. Mm -hmm. Don't go long on stocks which look like this. Always go sell cash secured puts. Correct. Get these stocks at the cheaper price. Correct. Correct. Awesome. Uh, Perfect. Win win strategy. Sell puts them rather. Okay, yep. bro. So um, you, do you want to minimize your. There you go. So let's right. just. Mm -hmm. um, I, I cannot see myself here. I don't know why. Um, sure. Can you see me or I, I don't know. If yeah, you can... I, can, I can see you. I, I'm, I'm on top. I know. I, I just need to. Yeah, yeah, let me... Okay, that's fine now. So, bro, um, mm -hmm. I mean, thank you very much. It's been great. Thank you, bro. We need to <laughs> do this more often. I left it, sure. so we mm -hmm. went over a bunch of talks. We, talk, we yeah. talked about a possible recession in the U.S. Guys, mm -hmm. go ahead and check out um, Mario's Patreon. Uh, you already signed up. It, it offers a great value. And if you guys also want to be in touch with me, Throughout the trading session, um, I am I am the, I am over there. I am asking Mario questions. We are you know reflecting about the situation of the markets, uh, reflecting about the intraday direction of the markets. So go ahead, um, check the link uh, down below uh, in the description box, 
And bro, thank you very much. It's been great. We, I mean, obviously, so this, much, this isn't gonna be the first time that we do it. We're gonna be doing this more often. And thank you very much, bro. You have a nice weekend. Thank you, bro. You as uh, well. Keep it up. Uh, keep on doing what you're doing. And thank you, you know bro. that. Uh, you know, you you were a guy that were asking me about the you know the indices. <laughs> yeah, like not yeah. not a long time ago. I am I am very yep. but very proud about what you're doing. Thank and you, just keep it up, okay? Thanks, so, okay, man. guys, yeah. um, take care. You guys have a nice weekend, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye, take care. Peace.